Uh huh. And we will make you sit. And you. Ooh, no, that didn't work. You. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Dance for me, spider. Break dance. D d d now, special effects. Aww. Spider go boom. Hello, everyone. My name is Atratsu, and today we are having a look at Trine 4. So, Trine 4 is the fourth development, fourth game in the Trine series. I have played all of them, and I love them very much. The developer is Frozen Byte Games, and Trine 4, The Nightmare Prince, was released on October 2019. To play through the whole game, it took... Actually, I was going to say me, but uh, played through with a friend, and it took us... 9.5 hours, so nine and a half hours. By the way, Tron 4 Nightmare Prince is priced at $29.99, and they also recently released DLC. I have not played the DLC as of yet, so this is just talking about the core game. If we were to look through like the collections and stuff, you can see Melody of Mystery is available. These all would fill in if I was playing the DLC. So, can't talk about that right now. I'm sure it's fantastic and fabulous, but uh, we will not be talking about that today. So, I think the best place to start would be just to start a new game. So, already at the beginning of starting a new game, you have a lot of choices that you can play. Let's stick with just some basic stuff and we can come back and explain this later. So, Trine is a fantasy series. And it's a 2D platformer, except for the one time that they did a 3D platforming style. It is told with a narrator. There are three characters. This gentleman here, Amadeus, the wizard. Zolia, the thief. And Pontius, the knight. So we're going to jump around to a couple different levels here, I think. But I just kind of want to go here first and the narrator i would count the narrator as an important part of the story the narrator feels like somebody who's reading a book that's really what trine feels like to me trine feels like a fantasy story where you are being read just a, a fairy tale story of three her heroes and their adventure. That's what Trine feels like, and I love it so much. Just for that aspect alone. The art style that they've taken with these games has always been unique and gorgeous. Um, I've never played a game quite like Trine. So again, the main gameplay mechanics are you're playing in as a 2D platformer. Trine 1, Trine 2, and Trine 4 are all... 2D platformers, Trine 3 was a 3D platformer. So 2D platformer, as you can already see with the tooltip there at the top, you move right and left with A and D. You jump with space, and then each hero has different abilities. So primarily Amadeus the wizard, you might think like casting fireball spells or magic and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Amadeus's abilities are to make boxes and then get on top of boxes and get rid of boxes. So that is Amadeus in a nutshell. Eventually Amadeus develops different abilities. It used to be in the other Trine games, it seemed a little bit more responsive when I would draw something. It would kind of take a hint from it and it still does sort of, but it doesn't feel like it's as important anymore. What you're looking at, for most of the characters, um, you're going to be using good old Wasid. You're going to be using the mouse to aim. With Amadeus especially, it's important that you keep in mind where your mouse is. With Zolia, you'll be aiming uh, 
shooting arrows in the direction that you're aiming. And with Pontius, you're going to be just your melee character. So you're going to be pointing in the general direction and then just clicking to swing. But we'll talk about those characters when we get to it. So you just saw that I just picked up one of these. I love playing as Amadeus because I can circle these. These are kind of an experience of sort. You need to have... Do they actually have a name for these? Upgrade. Maybe upgrade points is the fair thing. You need to collect 80 of these to get an upgrade point, and then you spend the upgrade point to upgrade an ability. As you go along in the quest, each character will unlock an additional ability at no charge. So whoever unlocks their first ability, I think it's probably Amadeus, will unlock Conjure Ball, and you'll have access to being able to conjure a steel ball. Oh, and that goes along with experience. So it looks like Zolia opens up her elemental arrows first because you have these skill points that you get by gathering these, but you also have skills which are unlocked from experience. And to be quite honest, I didn't even notice it. I'll just push that over there. And let's just put that there. Can we make it up here? We can. I don't want to I don't want to show too much more. Actually, I should I should just stop us right here because I don't want to go through the tutorial for each character because the tutorial for each character kind of demonstrates what they're capable of. If you've never played Trine before, this is a game that's just fine for you to jump in without having any idea what's going on. Ah, oh, no! Because this area, each area that you start, you learn each hero for the first couple of chapters, and then you go along. The only thing is that if we were to progress with this game, at least I wouldn't have all the abilities unlocked. So I would recommend that. However, let's just jump over to a progress game so we can see what happens when you're switching between the different characters because that is an important component of Trine. Have I done it? Ho oh. ho ho. Playing Jenga with snowballs. Oh. Kind of beautiful in a way. All right, go back to main menu. When you first come to the main menu, you don't have all these different things unlocked, but what I've always loved about the Trine main menus, at least that I can remember, is they typically have this sandbox that you can wander around in before you play anything. So you can log in here and before you've ever done anything in the game, you can play around in the main menu area to just experiment and learn how the characters control. So this is a good spot to demonstrate it right now, actually. So Amadeus has conjuring abilities and yep, no, none of the other abilities like blinking and stuff like that that are unlocked here right now. If I want to switch between the heroes, I switch between them with my number keys. Next up we have Zolia. Zolia has a grappling hook with the right click and fires arrows with the left. And then she also has elemental arrows and you would switch between elemental arrows by using the scroll wheel or you have, a lot of times you'll have the Q and the E keys that are bound. That's typically one of the things that I found about Amadeus that was frustrating was trying to cycle between all the different things that he was conjuring. My scroll wheel is not particularly reliable, so I don't like using the scroll wheel for anything other than getting to the bottom or top of a web page very, very quickly. And then you can just, you can use this grapple and go up and down with good old W and S. And then to disconnect, you can right click or you can jump. It's fairly intuitive as per usual. That's what I've loved about trying. The platforming is always spot on. Next up we have Pontius. It's more so the direction that he's facing is the direction that he's attacking. So your cursor really doesn't matter at this point. Right click 
to use your shield, left click to swing the sword. You do unlock additional abilities like charge and you use Pontius's shield and puzzles to redirect beams of light. And that's the thing about Trine. Each character has a different potential solution to a puzzle. That's something that's made the Trine puzzles particularly exciting and fascinating. So let's jump into my completed game. By the way, if you ever wanted to go to multiplayer and continue a game, we discovered this by jumping into play local multiplayer, well, play host friends and then inviting friends through that. So you can go here and come on. All right, and players, and then shift to invite, and I'm playing this through Steam. I don't know how many other platforms this is available on, but you'd hit shift, and then you could Steam invite your friend that way. So that's how you play invite them. There's also, as you saw, lots of other ways that you can do it. Let's go back to the main menu really quick, so we can load it up single player. New game, not new game, continue game. Play local single player. Single player controls a little bit differently than multiplayer does. Multiplayer, we played classic, where only one hero can be controlled at a time. And let's go here. Let's do, this is when all the characters were first united. Plus this is a beautiful level to start at. So let's do that. So after you complete a uh, chapter or an act, whichever you want to call it, then you get a little bit of what's going to happen from the storyteller. And I'm just like, please read me all of the stories. I wish all audiobooks were read by this man. And then you jump in. And then you have some cutscenes that take place beforehand. They are skippable. If I wanted to, I could press the space bar a bunch of times and skip. So they are skippable, that's just kind of a nice little nuance that goes on. A quick note about the story. Trine for a story is very simple and I don't want to give much away about it. Not because you're sp I'm spoiling anything, but because the adventure is seeing how it all unfolds. The short paragraph explanation is in Trine for the Nightmare Prince, you being the three Trine heroes, Pontius, Zoya, and Amadeus, are in search of the prince who is being tormented by nightmares. He was at the Astral Academy and escaped, and now these three heroes have been called up to bring him back to the Astral Academy. And that's the short of the story for it. So they're pursuing the prince, and all the different things that you encounter during the game are his nightmares. Typically a puzzle will require several, uh, later on in the game, the puzzle will require several different solutions. Maybe I could do this a couple ways. The easy way of solving this puzzle is grapple hook Azolia over. Ta-da, you're done. However, there are other ways that you could do this. With Pontius, when do you unlock that ability? Charge. Say you unlocked charge with Pontius early on. You could then just press shift to get across this gap. This is just a simple example. Amadeus also learns a teleport that you can use to get across gaps too, but I prefer Amadeus's more creative routes of getting across this gap. Ta-da! So, there are multiple solutions, multiple methods that you can approach a puzzle in Trine. There's an object above us. Hmm, how are we going to get it? We could just shoot an arrow at it, but that's kind of boring. Instead, let's take a box and hit it. By the way, I am dismissing conjured objects by having my mouse over them and pressing R. That's something that I didn't learn until later. You'll also notice that uh, old habits die hard and I try to draw the shape beforehand. That was a bigger deal originally. Also, originally, Amadeus could only conjure one box at a time. There are a couple different things that has changed from this Trine game and other Trine games. I'm not really going to contrast it, I just kind of want to 
give a basic introduction and an explanation on how the game would be played. If you like Trine, this is up your alley. I don't think that there's really anything in the game that you're going to miss that was in other ones. I think if you truly love Trine, you will love the way that this game is. There might be a few abilities that you're like, man, I really miss that, but the staples are here. Honestly, the staples are Amadeus makes boxes, Zolia shoots arrows, and Pontius swings his sword and blocks and redirects light with his shield. Those are kind of the staple skills that I would say really need to be in this game. That, and I do, I do so love having planks. But you don't unlock planks until much later in the game. And, as, and again, you see, I kind of like to draw them. So I'm like, let's draw a line across there. All right, let's draw a big circle. Uh, you failed me. Big circle. Good. So it does somewhat follow it, but not particularly well, especially if you're like, I want the circle bouncy ball. You can't have the circle bouncy ball. To get the circle bouncy ball, I need to play around with all these different keys. So my Q is always to make a sphere. My E is always to make a box. So, for example, let's put all these away. I just pressed E. I didn't draw. I didn't draw anything. So that gets me a box. F is to make a plank. And no, no. Which button is it? Which one? No, uh, I don't think I. I don't think I remembered which one it was. If we wanted to, we could look up key bindings. So, as always, key bindings very useful next object blink stomp throw don't we have a next object conjure previous oh they only give us the shift you could rebind but if you conjure something i can use the scroll wheel and then we're going to play the lottery on if i can actually get it to the bouncy ball there we go the bouncy ball the most unnecessary conjuring i've ever made in this game and i don't use it at all ever Kind of a novelty item. Fun to throw around, but I really didn't use it much because I do not trust it. It's kind of unwieldy. All right, and how do we get that? Hmm. I don't see where the solution to that might be. Uh, no, I have it already, but I don't remember how we got it. Hmm. Oh, I mean, I guess that works. That's probably how we got it in the first place, was just ramming against it. There's a lot of collectathon stuff going on. Some people might not like that. I did purposefully leave some skills unchecked so that I could demonstrate what it's like to upgrade stuff. So we can make his sword stronger. We can upgrade his leaping. We can make his stomping better. A lot of these could have been helpful. And we can also respec things if we so desire to. I do not so desire to. Honestly, the only character that I cared about having upgraded was Amadeus. And that's kind of one of the nice things about playing with a friend, is that your friend can spec into the character that they're playing. Now, let's go back really quick to what it was like on New Game so we can look at those settings really quick. Main menu. Just so we can kind of talk over the different game modes really quickly. So, if we wanted to make another New Game, which we don't, you have two options, unlimited. So when you're playing with your friends, you can have up to four people. So this allows you to play with four other people, which is, I mean, allows you to play with three other people plus you, which is fantastic. Originally, you would only be able to have three players maximum. And seeing as a lot of games have four player as an option, it's either co-op or it's four player, it is good to have that. So it is nice to have that, but it's only on unlimited that you can do that because then you can have multiples of each character. You could have four Amadeuses, you can have four Zolias, and you can go through the game that way. There's a lot of fun arbitrary chaos that you could cause with your friends, especially if you had four Amadeuses and then just dropping boxes everywhere. This could be a really fun game mode. Classic is what 
people are familiar with if you play played another Trine game and you've played it multiplayer. You can have three players, each player controlling one character. What happens is if a character dies, you run over to where they're at and you can help them respawn faster. So if we did unlimited, it's not going to matter. Then there are three different difficulties. I feel like I didn't see hard difficulty on my first playthrough until midway through the playthrough. For the final half of the game, at least. For the first half, we played on normal difficulty. And then for the final half, we switched it to hard. And let me tell you, the, the last boss, definitely a challenge on hard. Um, we weren't quite sure if hard made the characters faster or not but they, you definitely are much squishier and you take a few hits and you die really really quickly so our fight against the last boss was kind of drawn out a little bit to the point that i was about to throw in the towel but we defeated it we did beat the final boss on hard difficulty i would say trine is kind of a kind of a casual franchise it's not something you're necessarily playing for a very difficult complex struggle to get through the game but i would say normal difficulty is definitely fine for pretty much every anybody if you want a tougher time with the combat you can go to hard i don't think it matters too much it's kind of the experience that you're looking for there are no achievements uh related to difficulty which for me that's a sign from the developer being just like, hey, enjoy our game. Then, of course, multiplayer, you have a couple different options. I don't know who's around playing local multiplayer, but I'm glad that they have that as an option in the game. That's just a good feature to have in games for people that can play on a local machine. Online game is what's most important to me, though. I'm not going to go through the options. The collections, these fill out as you gather I had no difficulty tracking these down, and this is why. When we are looking at play local single player, when we're looking to jump into a game, there are not only, we not only look at the act. Let's do, no, no, no. Let's do this one. I love the badger. So not only do you look at the act that you're that you're on and the level within the act, as you can see, this is level nine, badger den. You also have the checkpoints in here too and the breakdown. It was incredibly easy to go back over the game and just mop up the sections that we missed. It took me like less than an hour to mop up. We were surprisingly thorough, but that is pretty typical of our playthrough um it was just so simple and easy to just re-go over everything and get it this was an easy 100 percent steam achievement game if that if that's a concern for people at all uh yeah and you don't ever worry about trying to find the treasures knickknacks or letters in these areas because you always need to collect these whatever we're supposed to call them purple raindrop things you always have them in areas that you are going to collect an item or a knickknack or a trinket they're always in the same area so as long as you're trying to track those down you're going to find everything in the game with no trouble whatsoever so i don't know some people might be i don't know i don't know who's being turned away from being just like this game sounds easy i don't play this game for its difficulty i play this game because it's beautifully made this is like just the game that's made perfectly for me there were many times that i was just like ah come over here and look at this there's just just it's just gorgeous ah oh, mm, chef kiss this is just a beautiful game i love it so this isn't gonna work let's do one of these nope not like let's not do one of these so think back to when we don't have all our abilities what you'd have to do how would you get around this one all right using multiple characters freeze that so now you're able to go there okay now what do we need to do well we need to have a box there because we can't reach box and this all becomes just intuitive and natural for you to do now there are some there are some sneaky tricks that i've learned that i could get myself around with without doing that and the fact that trine lets you do that there was a number of times we would solve a puzzle and we would both just say, that's not how you should solve that puzzle. But that's exactly what we did. 
And the fact that Trine allows us to do that makes me love it all the more. So, pause. All right, I've said a lot of stuff about this game now, a lot about the mechanics and the gameplay, the puzzles. There are some puzzles that are challenging, the story, the narrator. I love it all. Just look at the background right now, you know? Maybe it's just the, the graphic designer slash the tiny bits of me that is an artist, but I just love this. I love everything about this. I love this badger over here. He's really, really cute. I love this wooden, this wooden door into his home. I love this we rustic wheelbarrow. I love these huge mushrooms. I love these th purple thistle flowers, if they are thistle flowers. I love the sun, the way the sun is going, the golden, the greens. Oh, it's just so beautiful. I love everything about this here. I love that little cute little butterfly. Everything in Trine is just so, so well made. I cannot sing the praises of Trine enough. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Look at this guy. Look at how expressive he is. He's just a cute guy. He's got like, you think he's got a watch in his pocket over there? You see how he's just got, he's the kind of guy that would walk around with a monocle. He's just so fancy. He's just like, in his house. I love his house. Oh my goodness. I love Mr. Badger's house. So, we're not going to see the beautiful part of the house just yet. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. No, 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 no. Get out of the way. This, is, this isn't the part of the house that's beautiful. This is the part of the house that we need to solve a puzzle for. Get. No, that's not what I want to do. All right, come here. And we do this. So now it's propped up. And we do this. And that's how Zolia could solve that puzzle by herself. Let's see how somebody else might do it. The only one that I feel like would have a difficult time solving a puzzle by themselves would probably be Pontius. I don't quite know how he would manage this. But the wizard could just do one of these. Whoa. Okay, maybe not the wizard could do one of those. This might be something that you had to fix with Zolia. All right. Time for the Atratsu special. Did you order cheese? So here's the thing. I used to be able to do a flying carpet where I would just put two planks down. You'll notice I cannot pick it up. I found my way to do my flying carpet. I flying carpet by hopping. And this lets me fly wherever I want. There's a nuance of skill that's required, but not much. So, no, we're not gonna get that. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this house. Oh. Oh. If I ever own a house, I want it to look like this. Like, I don't know how I'd ever do that, but I just, oh, I love everything about it. He has so many books. They're old tomes and novels. I just love it. Oh, the atmosphere. And that, again, that's the thing, the theming, the atmosphere. Trine has it in spades. It's everywhere throughout this game each act feels different each area that you go through feels like its own adventure the narrator feels like grandpa is sitting down and reading you a story i i just don't this might not appeal to some people i i have to acknowledge that everyone has their own opinions and everyone likes and dislikes things for different reasons but i have always loved trine and the big part of why i've loved trine I don't even know if I can accurately put my finger on it. It's just all these different elements together. It's just all of it being put together to make this Trine game that I just sing the praises of and I love so very much. And especially at the time when we chose to play this game, this is, you know, when this video is coming out, this is coronavirus time. So there's just a familiarity with playing a Trine game and get out of here. There's a familiarity to playing a Trine game and and um, just warm, fuzzy feeling about it all. Just love it. Just love it. Oh, that's right. Look at this. Such a comfortable cove. I love it. Ah, oh, it's so good. It's so good.
Oh, that's right. We also have fighting sections of the game. So I guess I haven't explained that. Typically, what's going to take place as you play through the game is you're going to have... Oh, 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 oh. You're going to have a lot of puzzling and solving, and then you'll have mandatory combat sections. And the combat sections are kind of meh. But you can approach them differently with each character. So Pontius is typically the character that's the strongest in the fighting department, though Zoya could easily be second best. Comboing is the best. I would say my favorite thing is comboing with Zoya, freezing, and then smashing down characters. You unlock it later with Amadeus, but you toss down an object by pressing control. So just tossing them down by themselves doesn't do anything. I could do this until Jesus comes back. There, this isn't going to do me any good. However, if you take an object and drop it on top of them, that is how the wizard attacks. And that was one of the things that was tough about earlier Trine games is that Amadeus never really had a way to attack anything. So the fact that you can play as the wizard the entire time is, is cool. And when you're playing with a friend, oftentimes you have, you're, you're forced to figure out solutions to puzzles because your character can't do what the other characters do. So you have to figure out how you're going to get your character from point A to point B when playing in classic mode. If you're playing in unlimited, then you have unlimited switches. But I would highly encourage playing classic mode with a friend or two and just let hijinks ensue. However, I think I've gushed enough about this game. Hopefully this video has been entertaining or informing you on whether you're interested in picking up Trine 4 or not. Yeah, I just absolutely delighted playing this game. And uh, thank you to the friend who purchased this for my birthday because this was a great birthday gift and I'm glad that we played it together. And I'm glad that you have stuck with me together through this video. So, if you found it useful, as you know, the normal YouTuber stuff, like, comment, subscribe, that's the general gist. My name is Atratsu, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Look at that squirrel, look at that squirrel up there. Look at that squirrel. The squirrel's gone. Look at this place. The squirrel's back. I write to you on behalf of the Astral Academy Library Press. We would like to publish a Badger's Journal of Natural History. From your earlier letter, we understand you've completed your manuscript. Please submit it to us as soon as possible. Thank you.